Okay, so today I'm at the site um, in an area where formerly, during during the uh, World War Two era, there were munitions factories and uh, nitrocellulose uh, production facilities here. Um, I've explored this place quite a bit, but today I'm going to go inside this building in front of me here, which was where the SS guards were posted um, during that era to keep to keep an eye on everything and everything that was coming and going in this area. Um, I'm not sure if it was used by the Wehrmacht as well, but I'm pretty sure it was used by the SS, so I've been told. So I'm going to go inside and uh, take a look. Okay, so basically, I'm just out of breath because I've had to drag that huge wooden ladder around. Uh, oh, excuse me, I need to catch my breath. Right. Basically, there was a door around that side last time because I've been here before, but I only had a brief explore around because I didn't have a light or anything. Uh, well, that the door that I came in last time has been really well blocked up. So, this window was open here and I was contemplating going from there to there, which I'm pretty confident I could have done, but... I don't think I'd have been able to get back out, so I've just dragged this wooden ladder around so I can get inside. Right, I'll climb up and get inside and then I'll switch the video on and see what see what see what's inside. Okay, I'm inside. And the first thing I've just found <laughs> is a costume pickle halber <laughs> made out of plastic. Old Metropolitan Borough. Could be English, Old Metropolitan Borough. Some videos. Nice plates. Loads of documents. Absolutely loads of documents. I'm gonna take a look through them afterwards. Whoa, loads of old books. Music, moral books. I'm gonna take a look at these in a, in a second. Basically, last time I never got into this bit. I, it, there was like, there's like two parts of this building. Oh, cool, like a planning room or something. I wonder if this is for the Frauenwald area. Um, yeah, basically there was two parts of this building. There's the front part here, which is where the front doors and everything are. And then there's the rear part. And I couldn't, I couldn't get into this part because it's not connected or the block, or the, one of the, um, the doors was not connected. But I've managed to get in here. Which hopefully will give me access to the upstairs. Loads of um, like paintings and aerial views. Ooh, there's a nice old map. Let's have a look at some of these. What's in these? Yeah, there's like old aerial views. That's an old bridge that's been busted up. 1971, that says. I've been really quiet because there's uh, people in the area walking the dogs. I heard them when I got in, so I don't, I don't want to cause any attention to myself. Oh, there's like a library. Loads and loads of old documents and books. This is really interesting. Wow, 1909, 1865. That must, yeah, 1865. That must hold some documents from 1865. 
Fails with Paul. This is that's England. Fails with Paul. Look at the architecture. And the trams. Oops, that's English. I thought that there was a clock, like a wooden clock, and that was English too. What's this? Is this See that looks typical English architecture. So there's some English stuff in here. I'm gonna get one of these books out. This is from 18, 1857, apparently. Ooh, uh, I don't think this document's from 1857, but maybe just the information is, and it's been copied over. Uh, I'm not 100% sure what this is. What's that look? So I think it's something to do with the land, like maybe, I'm not 100% sure, but there's some very old documents in it, I mean it, these books alone are very old, but I think, flags that. Ooh, there's a Landsberg. There's a clue to where I am. <laughs> Landsberg, I'm Lech. Who are these guys? Some gentleman, he looks like a Burgermeister. Or a mayor. I don't know. Mm. Some really interesting documents here. I could spend all day in here looking about. This is fascinating. There's the front door. Let's have a look in this bit. More and more documents piled up. What's in this box? Ooh, floppy disks. Oh no, slides. Where's that from? Let me see if I can get... Oh, you can see that pretty clear. Some slides. These are these are well interesting. What is that? Not entirely sure. Put those back. Always put things back how you found them. That's the tip of the deer. Yeah. So as I was saying, this is the uh, this is the front door here. Aerials. Yeah, this this is there's a wagon out there. He's doing some work on his truck. My car's parked just behind that wagon. This is really really cool in here. These documents are pretty interesting. I've been inside here. Oh, there's a. This is some sort of bathroom or something. Just storage shelves. Some more of the slides. Uh, some more of the prints. Okay. I'm gonna check this area out here where it's dark and then, uh, but I'll have to turn my light on for that. I think this is just the shower area. Just the shower. Look at that window. Someone could have a look at you while you're having a shower if you forgot to close the curtains. <laughs> cool. This is just another bathroom, I think. Yeah, some toilet cubicles. VC, nicht in Betrieb. It's broken. Okay, right, I'm gonna turn my light and then go, go into the dark area. Okay. That looks just like a storage cupboard. Some cleaning. Finds. There's the upstairs, but I won't go up there just yet. Some more prints. Yeah, they must have done a, some like town planning here because there's loads of these models. 
This is must have been where the town planning committee or something were. That's pretty nicely done with all the trees and everything. But yeah, as I was saying in the in introduction, the brief introduction I gave, this place was uh, a barracks for the SS, some clay models, and um, I'm not entirely sure if the Wehrmacht are here, but in this area, the SS used to control um, and look over the facilities where a lot of the workers from the concentration camps were working. Just, I mean, about a mile away from here, there was the facility called Weingut Eins. Weingut means vineyard, which was a uh, code name for the, for the facilities, and they were building a huge underground bunker. And basically, that bunker was to be used for the production of Messerschmitt ME-262 fighter bomber interceptors. And uh, the production in Landsberg, I think it was only about 70% complete. But it also had a sister production, which was called Muldorf, which is to the east, about, I'm not entirely sure, 60 to 80 kilometers, maybe a little bit further, east of Munich. And it's always the Muldorf facility that gets the, um, that gets the sort of uh, notice and the fame on all the history programs. There was a, a series called Nazi Megastructures, and I believe it was the second series. Hey, up hey, oh, what's in there? There's a key. But there's a key in the door as well. Let's take a look where... Oh, that's just that, where I've been inside. It just joins up. Um, it's Muldorf was on Nazi megastructures. And they... Uh, I, I actually think the one in Landsberg was more interesting because the one in Muldorf was built... Uh, for the production of the M engines for the BMW, BMW 004 uh, jet, jet engines for the um, Messerschmitt. Okay, I'm going to go upstairs. Whereas the one here, Weingut Eins, that was actually the production of the aircraft. The engines were to be brought here, the, fu the fuselage, everything was to be made in Landsberg. This is a little bit more scarier feel to it, that's for sure. This is a little bit scary. <laughs> but I will have a look around. It's mostly empty. A few cardboard boxes, what's that? I don't know. Some electrical fittings. Just some old tiles. Um, in a previous video I have explored the production facilities around, around this area and some of them are absolutely fascinating. Some of them are amazing. This window's wide open. That's the road right there. Someone's been trying to close up here. Oh, I hope that rope wasn't used for more sinister things. Always gets your mind going a bit when you see a rope up like that. We used to explore, in my hometown in England as kids, we used to explore um, a farmyard. And that actually did that actually uh, did have someone who committed suicide at that farm. So you can obviously imagine as kids, we would always scare each other and our ima uh, imaginations run out, used to run absolutely wild. And here's another window, this is to the back. La th this is a completely different area. Like, last time I came here, there was a, there's a door at the back and it's about down there. And that gets you into the, to the some part of the bottom layer. But you can also get into the basement there. But you couldn't get up to all this. Which is 
There's far more going on up here. Those other parts were just empty. Oh, just some parts of insulation. I don't know what that is. Is that for TV aerial or something? really cool and cold up here though. There's a, a bit of a breeze as well which doesn't make it feel too nice. I'm gonna go over into that corner and have a look. As you can see that it's built really really well with all these beams inside. It's a really nice thing to look at. into the corner. Surprised any birds or anything that jumped out at me yet. Because that window's open over there, so I'm, I'm guessing there'll be all types of birds and maybe some bats and stuff in here. What's there on the floor? Bird houses or something? Yeah. Bird houses, all numbered. Another window, let's all look up here. It's a shame I can't get into the other area as well. There's that truck. You can maybe just see the front end of the car sticking out. There's a modern factory. This area is all um, where all the World War II buildings and factories were. All modern companies have taken a lot, a lot over of those buildings and actually used some of them and recycled some of the buildings, which is, which is pretty good. I have to watch my step. That looks like an old fitting. Or older, at least. I might go back downstairs and see see if I've missed anything, or see if I can get into uh, into the cellar or anything down there. Ooh, chimney. That's a fair old drop. I wonder if it goes right down to the basement. Right. Have a quick look around here, see if I've missed anything. Been in here. Been inside this one. That's just a clip that cleaning cupboard. Nothing too exciting in there. Okay, back into here. That's the window I had to climb through. I'm gonna have a quick look in these boxes or something. Music. 10 or 1. Ah, oh, that's tenor, that's bass. Okay, I'm gonna just have a quick look through these. What's that? That's something upside down. 1900. I'm just gonna have a look through these boxes, see if I find anything interesting. So I'm just um, going through some of the books here. And I found in that box, I started to find some history books. So I thought I'd just have a flick through and look what I found. Boom, boom. Amazing. Uh, let's have a look what it is. It doesn't say anything on the front. Ritter von Schleich. So it's from Ritter von Schleich. Uh, let me have a look what it is. 
I'm sure it did say something, what it was. Where is the title? Ah, here we go. Uh, Jagdflieger in Weltkrieg und in Drittes Reich. So, um, fighter pilots in the World War and the Third Reich. Um, Entekon des Volkstums. It's my history book about the Volkstum. Uh, Panzerjager. So, tank, tank drivers. Uh, Sieg over Frankreich, so it's, um, like uh, the war over Frankreich, uh, yeah, the war over France. Uh, you got some nice, um, nice map inside there. Absolutely amazing. I'm not gonna take any of these books, obviously, but I'm just gonna, I'm gonna just gonna stay here a while and have a look through. I also found this, uh, Deutsche Frauen Culture. So this is like a, a, a women's magazine from the, from 1932. So the year, literally, for five, um, five months, six months before Hitler became Chancellor. It's incredible. Look at the fashion back then. I must say the fashion back then was a lot more nicer than it is today. It's a lot more elegant. It looked, it looked fancy. Even when we, I liked it back then. Even when women were just going to the shop, they would dress up in really, really nice clothes and everything. Obviously not everywhere, but in the cities and stuff. Absolutely amazing. There's the uh, Imperial Eagle. Deutschland. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna carry on looking for the, a few more of these boxes and just see what else I can come up with. I was actually searching from something from that time, something that was marked from like that I had a swatch sticker or something like that on because I was finding so many documents uh, from the late eighteen hundreds to up until nineteen seventies, and I just for some reason I just couldn't find anything in between that. So I thought it must a lot of them would have been destroyed, but. Luckily, I found something. There was this guy, Dr. Alois Schlogel. 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 Stadtminister für Erinnerung, Erinnerung, Landwirtschaft und Forsten. And it says here Rex D. Fryer, Oberlieutenant of the US Air Force, Commander der Flugplatz Landsberg. Cool. Yeah, is that? Obviously, uh, after the war, but... Uh, here we go, let's have a look on the back. What does that say? I don't know, but it was made in Landsberg anyway. So he's something to do uh, post-war. He must have... The for uh, like a land minister for the forest and stuff post-war. It looks like he was appointed or overseen by Rex D. Fryer from the US Air Force. That's cool. Okay, I'm gonna have a I'm gonna carry on looking through this box. See if I can see anything else. Here's another really interesting book I've just found. It's got a swash sticker on the front there. Oh it's fallen to bits a little bit, but all about the uh, Deutsche Jungen. I don't know who that is. Who is that guy? Looks a bit like Rom, but it won't be Rom. I don't know. It's cool. Right, I'm gonna get out of here now because I've been in here for quite a while. Looking, just looking for all those books. Yeah, pretty cool place to. To have a look round. Right, I'm gonna get out of here now and go home. Before I leave, actually, I'm just gonna show the outside. This is where I got in last time. And in there, there's like a little bit of a corridor, some rooms. And then you can get into the basement. I had a look in the basement last time, and there's not an awful lot there. 
But this is uh, the place, um, Fraunwald. It's right next to a main road, you can hear the cars. And Weingut Eins was just over there, about half a mile over there. And all around here was all the facilities and everything, but as you can see, this place still stands and it's not even in bad shape, even inside and everything. It would be easily renovated. But someone's, I don't know if that's some farmers or something. But so there's the storage stuff out there as well. The windows look quite sinister with those bars on over there though. But yeah, really cool place to explore. Just a shame I couldn't get in that, that bit, but I'm not, I'm not all about breaking into places and stuff. You shouldn't do that. Because if you get caught, you're going to get done. You're going to get, you know, someone's going to be quite angry at you. So, I mean, if somewhere's left open, you know, go in at your own caution. If you get caught, just hold your hands up and say, you know, blah, 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 whatever. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Like that window, even though it was a bit of a death trap getting in there, I had to explore. All right. So that concludes the little tour around in there. Nothing much to, else to show, really. Uh, next video, I'm not too sure. Hopefully metal detecting. But I may be going to see some bunkers. So I might have like uh, some bunker videos coming up, which would be pretty cool. But I'll let you know. Anyway, thanks for watching. Stay safe.